In this video, we will embark on a journey through time to explore the fascinating history and present-day developments surrounding one of the world's most enigmatic mysteries, the Nazca Lines. Hidden deep within the arid plains of southern Peru lies an unsolved puzzle. The Nazca Lines, also known as Nazca Lines, are an intricate series of geoglyphs etched into the Peruvian desert floor. These remarkable creations date back over a thousand years, with their origins shrouded in mystery. The Nazca Lines were created by the Nazca culture, a pre-Inca civilization that thrived in the region from approximately 100 BC to 800 AD. These ancient people left behind pottery, textiles, and other artifacts, but it's the Nazca Lines that have captured the world's imagination. The story of the Nazca Lines' discovery is a fascinating one, filled with chance encounters and a relentless quest for knowledge. The Nazca Lines remained hidden for centuries. They were first brought to the attention of the Western world in the late 16th century. The very first published mention of the Nazca Lines dates back to 1553, when Pedro Cieza de Leon included them in his book. Interestingly, he referred to them as trail markers. In 1569, Luis Monzon reported observing ancient ruins in Peru, including what he described as roads, hinting at the complexity of these ancient creations. Antonio de la Calancha, a Spanish priest and chronicler, mentioned these geoglyphs in his writings in 1639, but they didn't gain much attention at the time. While the Nazca Lines were partially visible from nearby hills, the 20th century marked a turning point in their recognition. Fast forward to the 20th century, when the Nazca Lines were rediscovered. In 1927, Peruvian military and civilian pilots became the first to officially report these geoglyphs. However, it was Toribio Jimenez, a Peruvian archaeologist and historian, who brought them to the forefront. Toribio Jimenez, born in 1903, played a pivotal role in the rediscovery and documentation of the Nazca Lines. Jimenez visited the Nazca region in the 1920s and with his camera captured the intricate geoglyphs from above, providing some of the earliest aerial photographs of the lines. He published articles and a book, Las Lineas de Nazca, in 1939, drawing attention to these mysterious creations. Jimenez's dedication and passion for preserving Peru's cultural heritage helped raise awareness about the Nazca Lines. After Toribio Jimenez's work, the Nazca Lines garnered international interest. The Nazca Lines captured the imagination of American historian Paul Kosak in 1940-41 when he was in Peru to study ancient irrigation systems. During a flight over the lines, Kosak had a serendipitous moment. He noticed one of the geoglyphs resembled a bird. Kosak's fascination led him to delve deeper into the mystery of the Nazca Lines, alongside archaeologist Richard P. Schadel from the United States and Maria Reicha, a German mathematician and archaeologist from Lima. Kosak conducted aerial surveys and research, suggesting that the lines might have astronomical significance, particularly related to solstices and equinoxes. Maria Reika also devoted her life to studying and preserving the Nazca lines. She extensively documented the geoglyphs and proposed various theories about their purpose. Today, a host of archaeologists, researchers, and drone technology continue to unravel the mysteries of the Nazca Lines. Modern technology allows for precise mapping and preservation efforts without causing damage to the fragile desert landscape. The Nazca Lines are situated in the southern region of Peru, approximately 400 kilometers south of the capital city, Lima. The Nazca Desert, also known as the Nazca Plateau, stretches over 50 kilometers between the towns of Nazca and Palpa. It's characterized by a vast expanse of arid, rocky terrain. The geography of the Nazca region is defined by its challenging climate. It's one of the driest places on Earth, receiving less than 100 millimeters of rainfall per year. 
This arid environment is sparsely vegetated, with hardy desert plants like cacti and shrubs adapted to the harsh conditions. Over millions of years, wind and water erosion have sculpted the landscape, creating unique formations and patterns in the desert. The Nazca Lines were created on the high plateau of the desert, where the terrain is relatively flat and consists of layers of light-colored sedimentary rock and reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles. One of the main areas where the lines are located is known as the Pampa de San Jose, a vast level plain that provided a perfect canvas for the Nazca people to create their geoglyphs. The unique geography of the Nazca region is believed to have played a crucial role in the creation of these enigmatic geoglyphs. The fascinating Nazca lines, a testament to human ingenuity, emerged within two distinct phases. The first, the Paracas phase, occurred between 400 and 200 BC, followed by the Nazca phase, spanning from 200 BC to 500 AD. The Nazca lines present us with an array of designs. Some lines stretch like pathways across the landscape, while others form intricate, figurative depictions of animals and plants. For example, the famous hummingbird geoglyph, with its graceful lines and precise execution, exemplifies the mastery of the Nazca people. What sets the Nazca lines apart is the fact that some shapes are best admired from the sky, at an elevation of approximately 500 meters. However, these remarkable creations are not confined to the heavens above. They can also be seen from the foothills and elevated vantage points in the vicinity. These intricate shapes are often formed by a single, continuous line, with the most massive geoglyphs extending to lengths of up to 370 meters. The Nazca people, who lived in the region from around 100 BC to 800 AD, were resourceful and creative. To create these awe-inspiring geoglyphs, ancient artisans gently sculpted the earth, peeling away the upper layer of iron oxide-coated pebbles to reveal a contrasting yellow-gray subsoil. They used basic tools made of stone and wood, such as digging sticks and stone knives, to create the lines. These tools may seem primitive, but the Nazca's mastery of them is evident in the precision of their geoglyphs. The first step in creating the Nazca lines was to remove the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the desert surface, exposing the lighter-colored earth underneath. Nazca workers carefully cleared the top layer of stones, creating lines that contrasted with the surrounding terrain. Creating the intricate designs required careful planning and measurements. The Nazca people likely used simple surveying techniques, possibly with long ropes or siding tools. Once the layout was established, workers dug trenches about 10 to 15 centimeters deep, forming the outlines of the geoglyphs. Nazca artisans then filled the trenches with dark-colored stones, or in some cases, red clay, creating the contrasting lines and shapes we see today. The Nazca lines are not just any drawings in the sand. They are a testament to the extraordinary artistic skills of the Nazca civilization. These ancient artists created astonishingly lifelike depictions of animals. Look at this majestic hummingbird. The enigmatic spider. The graceful condor. One of the later discovered geoglyphs was the tree a complex and intriguing figure hidden for centuries. They even crafted the perplexing astronaut geoglyph, a figure that some speculate represents an extraterrestrial being. Beyond the animals and human-like figures, the Nazca lines feature a wide array of geometric shapes, circles, spirals, triangles, and trapezoids. These shapes are executed with impeccable precision, showcasing the Nazca's deep understanding of geometry. Many of these geoglyphs are perfectly symmetrical and appear as if they were drawn using modern drafting tools, even though they predate our technological era by centuries. Some Nazca lines hold mysterious symbols that continue to baffle researchers. There are lines that seem to align with solstices and other celestial events, suggesting an astronomical purpose. Others depict abstract shapes and patterns that defy easy interpretation, leaving us with questions about their intended meaning. Collectively, these lines span over 1,300 kilometers and cover a sprawling area of approximately 50 square kilometers. Today, 
Archaeological teams from world over with the help of modern technology continue to uncover new Nazca lines, adding to the growing list of discoveries. These newly unearthed geoglyphs provide fresh insights into the Nazca people's cultural and artistic expressions. In 2020, archaeologists, harnessing the power of drones, unveiled between 80 and 100 new geoglyphs, hinting at even more hidden wonders. While the Nazca lines have garnered widespread attention, it wasn't until relatively recently that the Palpa glyphs came into the spotlight. Archaeologists and researchers began documenting and studying these geoglyphs in the mid-20th century. The Palpa glyphs feature an array of intricate designs, including the striking hand glyph, among others. What makes the Palpa glyphs particularly intriguing is their geographical proximity to the famous Nazca lines. Some of the Palpa glyphs overlap with or complement the nearby Nazca lines, suggesting a deeper cultural and symbolic connection. Both the Nazca lines and the Palpa glyphs exhibit astronomical alignments, with certain figures corresponding to solstices and equinoxes. The Paracas culture, known for its remarkable textiles and intricate art, is considered by some historians to be a possible precursor that influenced the development of the Nazca lines. Their textiles, featuring intricate designs and vibrant colors, offer a glimpse into the artistic sophistication of this ancient civilization. Some even believe that the Paracas culture created the well-known geoglyph, the Paracas Candelabra which is a massive and mysterious figure etched into a hillside overlooking the ocean. In 2018, archaeologists using drones made a groundbreaking discovery in the Palpa province, 25 geoglyphs that are now being assigned to the Paracas culture. These newly revealed geoglyphs have challenged our understanding of ancient Peruvian civilizations. Some of these geoglyphs represent warriors, a significant departure from the subjects commonly associated with the Nazca lines. What makes these geoglyphs even more intriguing is their age. Many of them predate the associated Nazca lines by a thousand years. Some of these Paracas geoglyphs are situated on hillsides, in contrast to the Nazca lines, which are primarily on the desert floor. These newly found geoglyphs provide us with artistic details and cultural insights that were previously unknown. The true purpose of the Nazca lines continues to elude researchers, leaving us in a realm of speculation. It's worth noting that the Nazca culture was prehistoric, leaving behind no written records to unravel their intentions. While the exact purpose of the Nazca lines remains debated, some theories suggest they served as massive astronomical calendars, with certain lines aligning with solstices and other celestial events. Throughout the years, archaeologists, historians, and mathematicians have tirelessly strived to unravel the true purpose of the Nazca lines, leaving us with a rich tapestry of interpretations. Paul Kosak and Maria Reicha proposed a theory steeped in astronomy and cosmology. They believed that the Nazca lines functioned as a unique observatory, guiding attention to specific points on the distant horizon where celestial bodies, including the sun, rose or set during solstices. In 1985, archaeologist Johann Reinhardt introduced a compelling theory. He emphasized the significance of water sources in Nazca region and economy throughout history. Water sources, although scarce, were vital for the Nazca people's survival, and some theories suggest that the lines were associated with rituals to honor water gods or mark underground aquifers. Reinhard theorized that the Nazca lines and figures played a pivotal role in religious rituals associated with the worship of deities linked to water availability, a vital element impacting crop success and productivity. He saw the lines as sacred pathways leading to places where these water-related deities could be revered. The figures themselves symbolized animals and objects, believed to invoke the deities' blessings for a bountiful water supply. Swiss art historian Henry Stierlin proposed an intriguing idea in 1983. He suggested a link between the Nazca lines and the production of ancient textiles found wrapping Paracas culture mummies. 
Stirling's theory proposed that these geoglyphs could have served as giant primitive looms, used to create exceptionally long strings and wide textile pieces characteristic of the region. While not universally accepted, some scholars have noted similarities between Nazca textile patterns and the lines. These similarities, they argue, may stem from shared cultural influences. Beyond these prominent theories, various other speculations have emerged over the years. Some believe that the geometric lines conveyed water flow or irrigation schemes, while others see them as integral to rituals meant to summon water. The depictions of spiders, birds, and plants are often interpreted as fertility symbols. It has even been suggested that the line served as an astronomical calendar, marking celestial events with precision. The Nazca lines continue to mystify us with their multifaceted meanings. As we explore these theories, we are reminded of the profound and enduring mysteries etched into the Peruvian desert. Eric von Deniken, a Swiss writer, was deeply intrigued by the Nazca lines and held strong beliefs in the existence of extraterrestrial beings. Von Deniken's writings extend to various archaeological sites, including the Egyptian pyramids, Stonehenge, and Easter Island. He proposed a fascinating theory, a connection between these sites and extraterrestrials. In his writings, von Deniken often explained the birth of religions as responses of ancient people to encounters with beings from other planets. In 1968, he authored a best-selling book titled Chariots of the Gods. In this groundbreaking work, he put forth a bold theory. He proposed that the Nazca lines were, in fact, landing sites for UFOs. He believed that these shapes and lines were not of human origin, but were created by extraterrestrial visitors. He theorized that these patterns served as navigational aids for alien spacecraft, functioning both as runways and landing pads. Eric von Deniken even drew comparisons to modern airports, asserting that the Nazca lines bore a striking resemblance to these contemporary facilities, offering it as evidence of alien usage. While some critics argued that Eric von Daniken's books, like Arrival of the Gods and Chariots of the Gods, lacked intellectual credibility and literary merit, it cannot be denied that his writings drew thousands of visitors and believers to the Nazca lines, leaving an indelible mark on the fascination surrounding this mysterious site. In the absence of a conclusive archaeological consensus, various unconventional ideas have emerged, igniting intrigue. For instance, one fringe theory suggests that the Nazca people employed balloons for aerial observations of the lines. It's a captivating concept, although it lacks archaeological evidence to substantiate it. It's truly remarkable that these seemingly simple drawings have endured the test of centuries, leaving us in awe of their resilience. Yet as we ponder the mysterious allure of the Nazca lines, there's also a natural explanation to their enduring existence. It can be attributed to the unique composition of the terrain. Unlike sand, the surface here is made of stone, significantly reducing erosion. Furthermore, the Nazca region boasts an arid climate, characterized by scarce rainfall and minimal wind throughout the year. These factors have contributed to the preservation of these superficial lines, which are merely 10 to 30 centimeters deep. However, the Nazca lines are not impervious to threats. The very elements that have preserved them for centuries now pose challenges. Climate change, a global concern, has its impact even here. The vulnerability of the site to shifting weather patterns and heavy rains is a growing concern. Moreover, the lines find themselves in a precarious location, susceptible to potential damage from vehicles, vandalism, and the lack of protective measures. With the ever-present vulnerability of this historical treasure, the importance of safeguarding the Nazca lines cannot be overstated. Any unfortunate incident could lead to irreparable losses, not only archaeologically but also historically. As we marvel at the resilience of the Nazca lines, we are reminded of their fragility in the face of evolving threats. The responsibility to protect this cultural and historical marvel rests upon us all. As we conclude this journey, the Nazca lines remain an haunting enigma, a testament to the creativity and dedication of ancient civilizations. As we continue to unravel their secrets and protect their legacy, they remind us of the enduring power of human curiosity and how much more is there for us to explore.
If you found this exploration intriguing, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Stay curious and join us on more journeys through history.